Okay, I hope you guys got your pens and paper ready for tonight. It's always really good to do some self-development. Um, I try and read a book a month. Um, something that I started during the pandemic and it's something that I've continued because the five by five always has 10 minutes of self-development. Audiobooks have become like my best friend because I'm on the go a lot and um, I've learned a lot. So I hope that you guys enjoy this tonight. I'm going to be sharing my screen too in a second. Let me get something off of here that doesn't need to be on here. Okay, let's see, make sure everything's on here. All right, we're going to begin. First of all, how are y'all doing tonight? Y'all doing good tonight? And you can mute anytime, unmute anytime you need to. I'm going to be really looking at the chat tonight. And I'm going to let some people maybe, you know, share and you can keep an eye on it too. I don't know who all is on here. But I'm thinking that we're going to have quite many. So tonight we are going to talk about the four C's. How many of you guys have heard about the four C's before? Has anyone heard about that? What is it? The four C's in your business. Probably not because I just heard of it recently. So I am going to share my screen. Okay, let's see. Okay, can you guys see my screen right now? Can you see it? Okay. Yeah, I can see it, Jan. We can see it. All right, perfect. Okay, so this is kind of be like um, teaching, mentoring, um, really deep exercise I want you guys to go through because what happened is we went through the pandemic. We had all this hyper growth. We've had so many people join. They've had instant success. And then the world's opening up. So let me, um, people just in case. You guys are going to mute yourselves, but I'm muting everybody for now. Okay. Even though I love babies. Okay. There we go. All right. Let me get out of here. Go back. Okay. <laughs> it's jumping all around. As long as you guys can see this. All right. So, um, first of all, like I said, we've had a lot of hyper growth. We've had incredible success the last two years. Everything's starting to open up now, and we're all starting to kind of go back into our shells a little bit because some people are really scared to do events, to do parties, to ask people for actual um, small percent. So, we're going to talk tonight about. Hold on. Mute. Mute. Okay. We should be good. Mute. All right. So anyway, we're going to go straight into this because um, the four C's in business, in your life, are going to really help you with any new endeavor that you have. This might be for someone who's been in Simsy for a really long time, and it might be for someone who just joined this month. It might talk to you and help you move forward in a life situation, or it might even help you in your business. But tonight, we're going to really work on it with our business, okay? So you can see here where it talks about fear. A lot of people are super scared to talk to people in their business about the opportunity, about, um, you know, buying products, about, you know, referrals. And why do you think 
that is, right? There's, we're gonna go into the four C's in a second, but so many people will join and say, I don't want to recruit until I feel capable of being able to train other people. I don't want to ask people to buy the products until I know all the products, right? I mean, that would be like me saying, I don't want to have any team meetings until I'm a director. I don't want to do this until I'm a superstar director. You know, I don't want to do this. Or my biggest one lately has been, this is just like a, a personal thing, but I don't want to cut my hair until I lose weight. I mean, just crazy stuff, right? Um, so I want to tell you the difference between fear and courage. Fear is whenever you're so scared, you're ready to wet your pants, okay? But courage is doing it when you're scared with the wet pants. And it's a huge difference. If you go backwards, then you're going to wish that you did some things. And if you go forward, then you're going to be able to move into the next areas, okay? So the book that I read, I took some inserts from it, as you can see, it's called The Four C's by Dan Sullivan. He writes a whole bunch of really many books that are, you can finish them in like an hour or two. He's 77 years old and he talks about how he has goals for when he's 100. He said something really funny the other day, which um, I'm just going to share this. I didn't really plan it, but I feel like it's really important. He said he's 77 years old and he's a senior citizen, but he's never, ever taken any advantage of any kind of thing with the senior citizen. So when the pandemic came along, he went to um, Trader Joe's because he wanted to get some things. He was trying to get healthy. And he was standing in line for with about 60 people. And he looked up on a sign and it said, if you were a senior citizen, you can come in an hour earlier. And he's like, I've never taken advantage of it. But I figured, hey, I'm going to be a senior citizen tomorrow. So he left and he came back at nine o'clock in the morning the next day when it was an hour earlier. He said what he experienced was awful. He experienced grumpy, grouchy people that were 65 and older talking about death, talking about you know, um, the things they couldn't do anymore, the things that they wish they could do. And he said it just was so negative that he decided to leave and come back the next day at 10 o'clock and sit with everybody that was in the line, whether they be 50 deep or whatever, because he didn't want to associate himself with negativity. And he has goals for himself. And hearing this man speak at 77 years old about the goals he has, every 90 days and also whenever he's 100 is very inspiring because a lot of us think that when we hurt, hit a certain age then we're done but he said he's in the best shape he's ever been in it is just an amazing inspiring book if you ever want to read it so there are two options there's courage and then there's courage avoidance you're either going to be one you're going to be courageous or you're going to indulge yourself in some kind of method or activity that you're going to avoid being able to move forward it's going to look like paralysis. It's going to look like procrastination. And in some cases, it will look like an addiction. Um, I'm reading some of this so you'll know. But courage avoidance means that you're not allowing yourself to actually experience something. Listen to this. Actually experience something you're supposed to experience in order to grow to the next level. But having courage and pursuing good despite fear or discomfort is what is going to move you forward. It's just like a glow stick. It doesn't glow until you break it, right? You hear growing pains. Growing pains means you're growing. You're stretching outside your comfort zone of your body. So everything that you are going to do to be able to reach the goal that you have for yourself is going to take something new. The person that you are today in 2022 is not the same person you were in 2021. It's taken a new person to be in this year. The person you're going to be in 2023 is not going to be the person you are in 2022. And this might offend some people, and I might step on some toes here, but listen, where you are right now and where you're going is only the difference of the no's that you're going to hear. And the people who get you to your first level of success are not going to be the same people that are going to get you to the next level of success. And it sounds hard. There are still people with me from in 13 years of Cincy. But there's a handful, slew, maybe even like a, a home full of people that quit and are not with us anymore. And they were the people who got us to the level that we were at today. So you have to know, you always have to be new. You always have to be ready. You always have to be, you know, um, challenged or you'll become complacent 
and then it'll, it'll just end. So the four C's we're going to talk about, as you can see, is commitment, courage, capability, and confidence. And it's illustrated up here. And you can see it's a clockwise progression, right? But nothing in your life, nothing in your business starts until you commit to achieving a specific measurable result with a specific date in your future. You hear us talk about SMART goals all the time. The reason we talk about them is because they have to be specific, they have to be measurable, they have to be realistic, and there has to be a time to them, right? So that is very important to know that courage is required to be able to move to capability. And what I mean here is that we all have capabilities here. When you hear someone say they're capable of doing that, you, every one of us have capabilities, but it's what we commit to is where our capability is going to come in. So if we commit to not doing anything, then we're going to be capable in failing. We're going to be capable in not doing the things that are going to get us ahead. But if we will commit, we're going to learn to be courageous, which is going to make us capable to be able to have success. So where do you think most people get stuck in their business? Y'all can use the chat. Where do you think within these four blocks, people get stuck in their business? Confidence, where do you think it is? Okay, um, that's good. The place they always get stuck is commitment. That's right, commitment. Because commitment means I'm gonna do everything I can to get there. And if you're not doing everything you can to get there, if you're not being courageous, if you're not moving forward, then you have a problem with that commitment part. You cannot get to courage, capability, or confidence without committing. So now I want you to think about what is something in your life and I want you guys to put it on here. What is something in your life that you have been committed to and you have followed through? So write that down. It can be anything. What is something you committed to? Yep. Marriage. And marriage, it takes work. It's not easy. School. Kids, sobriety, oh, that's awesome. Raising your son, grandparenting, 12-step recovery. That's right. So you had to start with the commitment that you wanted your life to change, right? Or you had to start with the commitment that this is what it was going to be for you. Then you had to show up every single day. You had to be consistent every single day. You had to be clean. You had to... You know, remind yourself that what you're working for is worth it. Those kids are worth it. Your husband's worth it. Those grandbabies are worth it, right? Your health is worth it. So in your business, there's something worth it. There's something that you clicked, joined for, because you had some kind of hope and some kind of spark of maybe this is the answer, right? So you click the button or you earn the kit or you join for 25 or $20 or whatnot but are you committed, right? That is incredible, Donna. Are you committed? So I'll share this really quickly. When the pandemic came, it scared me to death, absolutely scared me to death. That's why it took a couple of months for me to even come on here and have meetings with you guys. I had no idea how to even lead you guys through this. I mean, this was new. Only thing I knew was I was watching John Maxwell and I was going with all the optimism and all the positivity that he could put in my body because no one else could do it. Everywhere I looked on TV, every person I talked to, it was fear and it was being scared. And it was about scarcity and it was about what I would not have. And I was like, I will not accept this. I will not accept this in my life. There's going to be a way that my business will go forward. There was a time during that time about where I lost some shows because someone took them. I, the world shut down. So those shows got shut down for a little while. I um, didn't have any home parties because nobody wanted to have home parties. 
didn't even want to get the basket parties because you had to like spray it with something and use gloves and show everyone on Facebook that you were sanitizing everything before you get to it, right? I was scared, guys. I was scared because this is my livelihood. This is my income. And I was like, this is going to come crashing down. And it took a commitment with me. I was like, you know what? This will not happen. That is why we have the internet. My commitment is I am going to enroll in classes. I am going to learn Instagram. I am going to learn how to do social media. I am going to learn how to have online parties. I am going to learn how to do bingo. I am going to learn all the things that's going to help my team navigate through this. And what I found was a courage because I was scared to death to go live that first time on bingo. I was scared to death to go live on my page talking about the things that John Maxwell was teaching me on my public page, trying to help people understand that this too shall pass. It took courage to hit that live button because I was scared someone was going to come in and just tell me that I was wrong. But I knew that this was something I had to do. I became very good at it. I started teaching you guys. I started practicing it. I started learning busily. I started doing project broadcasts. I started learning all these things and becoming better and become confident in it. That is something I did to save my business during the pandemic. Now, since he did a great job, you know, they started throwing out, you know, different products to us in 21, but 20, there was a scarcity of things. There was a, a lot of things were missing. And I honestly didn't know how to get through it. So you have to be able to commit to something in this business. You can't be perfect at every single thing. There's going to be things that you have a strength in that others don't. There's going to be something you're weak in that someone is going to be stronger in and you can find them. In the beginning, I didn't know how to do fundraisers, but I didn't sit around and tell everybody I didn't know how to do fundraisers. I found out who the fundraiser queens were and I contacted them. And I asked them to talk to the team like 12 years ago on freeconferencecall.com. I was scared out of my mind because I had never talked to any of these amazing Scentsy Superstar directors. Because I was, at that time, I think I was a star consultant. I mean, yeah, I was a star consultant. And I'm reaching out to these superstar directors I don't even know. But I wanted knowledge. I wanted to be able to trailblaze away for you guys. And you guys have that in this business. You have to be brave. You have to jump out of that comfort zone to be able to move. So that is my example of commitment just recently um, in the last two years that all these four things had to come forth, right? So I want you to take a minute and get out a piece of paper. And I want you to think about this formula, okay? I want you to think about a growth experience that you've had. And I'm gonna make it easy for you. I'm gonna start with a personal growth experience from your past where you clearly went through these four stages. Some of you guys have already told me, sobriety definitely has a lot of stages, right? Um, going through divorce, um, you know, learning to be a good wife or husband. I mean, a lot of this stuff takes steps, takes stages, but some of us have really, really big accomplishments in our life, right? So just take a second and write that down. This can be something that happened recently. It can be something from a long time ago. The only important thing here is that you took a big jump and found capability and confidence as a result of going through that. So take a second and write that down, okay? And then we're going to move on to something else. So this is what your form is going to look like here. It's going to look something like that. It should come up in a second. You can draw like little blocks of what you are committed to. Why it took courage the capability that emerged from it, and you in higher confidence. The doors that open for you when you try something new are things that you can't even see because your future is just waiting for you. Your future self is just waiting for you to get more knowledge, to get more education, to finally just say, hey, you know what? Try it. You know, one of the things that we do at our retreats is we write a letter to ourselves from our future self telling us how proud we are that we finally did the thing telling us that, look at all the lives that you impacted. 
Look at what you were able to achieve. Look at the legacy that you left. We've even gone as far as telling us to like write down if you were to be on a stage and you're getting ready to get the biggest award in Cincy, the, the best one that you can think of, you know, you're getting to become a superstar director or a circle of excellence or, you know, whatever, shining star, whatever it is. And you could choose one person to be able to announce you on that stage. What would you want them to say about you? That's a big one right there. Choosing the person who's going to do it. And also, what would they say about you? And then are you living your life right now the way that that person would speak of you? That opens up our eyes so many times to be able to say, you know what? No, I'm really not committed. I think I'm just playing around. I'm going in my office. I'm making samples. I'm on the computer. I'm scrolling Facebook. But am I really trying? Do I really want this to work for me? Because you guys have it in here. That's all it takes is for you to show up, for you to look in the mirror and know that person in the mirror is waiting for you to show up. I can't do it for you. Since you can't do it for you, you have to do it for yourself. And I'm here to guide you. Your directors are here to guide you. Your sponsors are here to guide you. But you're the one who has to pick up the phone and text people and call people. You're the one who has to get those samples in people's hands. You're the one who has to do the follow-up. You're the one who has to keep hearing no until you find that gold mine right? Going through it now, having life as I knew it removed in a split second to where I cannot breathe without help of oxygen. That is a struggle. And I acknowledge you. And I think you were just amazing for showing up. I use you as an example. So many times when people call me and they just want to give up. I mean, you have inspired me and you've inspired so many people, Donnell. I changed careers in November. It took so much courage and commitment. It's given me so much confidence to realize I'm capable of doing more than one thing in the workforce. And that makes you stronger. That makes you a leader. That makes you someone who is going to change lives. Someone that has walked down the path and been able to look at other people and say, this is how you do it, right? Because it's hard to say, this is how you do it when you haven't been through it. But the thing is, there's so many of us in life that we've gone through life so much. We like how did we get through this? Was I in survival mode? What's going on? You know, some people were like, you know, Shannon, you just got lucky and sensey. And I used to really let that get to me. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I did. Maybe I just got lucky. But someone pointed out to me one day. So did luck call all the people and have all the parties? Did luck book all the events? Did luck do all the follow-up? Did luck make all the samples? Did luck you know, sponsor all the people and get them trained? Did luck do that or did you do that? I did that. There is no such thing as luck in this business because when you put out those seeds and you plant them, they will grow. You just have to water them every single day. I moved to Arkansas from California to live with my son. Oh, that's amazing, June. And I know that was scary. There's a lot of things that we do that are scary, but we look back and we know it was the best thing for us, right? So y'all should have done this exercise by now. So I want you to just think about this because so many people, they think about like selling in Cincy, selling the products, selling the opportunity, selling all these things. But the one thing you haven't sold yourself on is yourself, that you can do this, right? You can sit here and sell Cincy Fresh all day and spray your bed and go live and do all the things. But when someone says no to you, what do you do? You put it down and you just don't try anymore. Why? You have to sell yourself on the fact that that person might not need this, but somebody else might. And somebody else might after that. And this product makes a difference. Since he makes a difference, you make a difference. Going through the first stages of my husband's leukemia diagnosis now, since he is life, I love doing what we do because of the smiles it brings others. And it's amazing how this place can be a happy place for so many people, especially during the dark times. You know, whenever I have a lot of chaos going on in my life and drama and just stuff that is just out of my control, since he's my happy place, the people that I have met, my customers, my hostesses, my team, you guys make me happy. And that's where I pour my energy into because it pays me back tenfold and emotions of making me feel happy. 
And some people think it's a burden. And the only reason I believe that they think it's a burden is because they have not experienced what sense he can give them. And I'm not talking about money and I'm not talking about chips. I am talking about a rooted, heartfelt, incredible feeling of belonging and knowing that you make a difference in other people's lives. So the more specific that you are with the goals that you make in your life, the more specific your deadlines are, the stronger and more achievable your commitment will be. If you say in 90 days, I am going to hit director, then we've got to go through and you've got to make those goals and deadlines specific. How many parties, how many people are you going to talk to? How many um, ways are you going to get $200 in orders? I mean, you sit down and you strategize because it can happen. I've seen directors hit, I mean, people hit director in 90 days. I've hit, seen people hit superstar director in a year. Now, you want to be sustainable. You don't want to have to put all your information and, and your effort in. And then all of a sudden you don't get paid a title anymore because it was all you. You want to build and you want to be sustainable, but it is possible whenever you put down goals that are specific and deadlines. You know, when I was going through this, it made me realize that I get stuck back at commitment too. When I don't show up, when I make excuses, it's all commitment problems that we have. And I was telling um, someone today, how many of us have imposter syndrome? I'm gonna raise my hand right here. Because there was a while I didn't get paid a title years and years ago. And, but I was a superstar director and that was embarrassing. And I felt like an imposter that I couldn't train people, that I could not, you know, tell you guys how to do it when I wasn't even being able to get paid a title, right? And there was nothing I could do about it because I could put in my to show up and see how they could make a difference. It didn't help me either, right? So imposter syndrome is real too. It's, it's very real because after my husband leaving and then losing my job since he has given me, I'm so happy it's given you a purpose. And that's something we're going to do in a minute. But I want you to listen to me. If you've ever felt like, you know, you won a marathon and you have the trophy, but you haven't won any more and you're going to go train more people on how to you know, run that marathon, you might feel like an imposter. I'm using something different than Cincy because some people have had achievements in their life that they never feel like they can do again. And they feel like an imposter. And what happens with imposter syndrome is not the fact that you're an imposter, it's the fact that you don't like the person that you have become because you put something with that. I thought when I became a Cincy superstar director, I would be happy. I thought that when I became a Cincy Superstar Director, it would get easy. I thought when I became a Cincy Superstar Director that everybody else would want to be a director and get paid a title all the time. I had a whole lot of weird red light stories that I was telling myself about being a Superstar Director that was making me unhappy. Therefore, I felt like an imposter. But when you meet other people who are like, hey, I'm not getting paid a title either. Hey, you know what? I haven't recruited either in a year. Hey, you know what? I didn't go to any of those trips because my family came first. You realize you're not an imposter. You hit a goal and you celebrate that goal, but you keep pushing, right? You keep pushing and you never, ever give up. I hear people all the time. They'll go from director to DQ to superstar consultant and imposter syndrome sits in because they're not a director anymore. It doesn't matter. Title does not define you. That's something I've learned. It's something that I have really embraced. That title doesn't define you. You matter and you're worth every single thing in this world. You know, you make a difference. Whether you have a title, whether you fall back from director, it doesn't matter. Because guess what? You know how to get there. You've done it before. So something's happened with that commitment because something has sunk in and got you stuck to where you don't think you can do it anymore, right? You don't think you can make the jump from superstar consultant to director. You don't think you can make the jump from star consultant to superstar consultant or lead to star. Why? Why do we do that to ourselves? It's usually a commitment problem. So 
confidence is how you feel as a result of acquiring a capability. When you guys talk to people and you do follow up and people say, yes, I want to spell the new sentence. Or you come up with some kind of like scent crate or some kind of whiff box, or maybe you, you know, they have a 10 bar special. You are starting to become capable of being able to be creative to be able to increase your PRV, right? So now you're able to feel confident because I'm going to have another 10 bar special. And guess what? I'll have seven, six or seven people. I'll say they want it and I'll hit my $200 or I'll put some scent crates together or I'll do some cleaning buckets or you start targeting little things in different products and you start seeing that it's not the whole catalog. It's not the great big, huge picture that you have to move forward. It's the little bitty pieces that give you the confidence and give you that capability. The only way that you get that confidence is by committing, getting courageous to move forward, finding those capabilities, and then you feel confident, right? I was trying to read to see if I am. I am a star and I haven't been paid at title, but for the first month, it seems like I'm the only one doing all the work on my team. Then the only advice I tell you is recruit more people. I saw a star director sitting up there with Orville one time. She'd been in Cincy for about, I think, 11 years, and she was stuck at star director. And she could not figure out why she hadn't become a superstar director when all these other people were hitting superstar director. And he looked at her and he said, you can't control them. The only thing you can control are the people you talk to, the conversations you have, the people that you mentor and train and recruit, 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 sponsor, 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 bring new blood in because you can't make a dead horse move, right? So what? We can bring them to water, but we can't make them drink it. So you start bringing in new blood. You start bringing in new life and you start to realize the people who got you to star consultant are not going to get you to superstar consultant. So you have to work on sponsoring. Courage is the universal proof of growth. Anytime that you're like, wow, I was brave in that situation, you grew. There was something that you grew from. I grew from my divorce. I grew from the things that were just so awful in my life that I had to deal with. I'm stronger because of them, right? You always hear what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. There's a song about it because it's true. So if you sit there for a second and really Give yourself a pat on the back. When you felt brave in those situations, you grew more. You grew so that you would have a testimony to be able to share with others and how you can get through those storms in your life. It's important for leaders to be open and straightforward. That's why I'm here today, tonight, telling you vulnerability, transparency is everything. If you guys think I got it perfect going on, if you guys could only see into my head on a daily You'd be like, what in the world is Shana thinking about? But I'm vulnerable. I'm transparent with you because I don't want you to think that it, it's super easy that I don't do anything. But I want to be able to break it down to you to where it's simple and there's systems so that you can do it too. I want it to be duplicatable to where you say, I can do that too. If I make it look too hard, you're not going to want to do it. Who would? If you found out that your dream job took so much time, you'd never see your family. You would always be away from home and you'd never be able to enjoy the things, the life that you wanted to work for. You wouldn't want to do it, right? So you come up with systems, you come up with simplicity and you come up with dupla. What? Oh, offer the host kit to anyone and everyone. Yep, that's right. She's telling you exactly what to do to be able to work on that sponsoring. But you want to make everything duplicatable. I've had a lot of messages this week about, you know, I've, I've been in class like for the last seven or eight weeks and um, and I'll tell you why now that it's over because I didn't want to tell anybody because I was afraid I would fail, but I got a real estate license. That was hard. If any of you guys are real estate agents, bravo. That was the hardest mess I've ever dealt with in my life. I don't want to be a realtor. I'm super happy with Cincy, but I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of waiting for someone else to show me where I'm supposed to go next. So I wanted to take control of my life to where I could go and start researching my own stuff. And I wanted to know everything that there was to know about land, about homes, about location, about all the things that would be good for my family in the season that we are in. I was tired waiting for someone else to do it for me. How many times do you feel like you're tired waiting for someone to do it for you? I'm tired of waiting for someone to just show up and want to join my team. I'm tired of waiting for a customer to call me 
to get some more orders. It doesn't happen like that. It doesn't. You have to move forward. I know what I want in my life. And for me to move forward, I had to take control of it. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe it won't. But it's something that's been put in my heart. And I've learned so much already that I've ended up in the situation I'm in because I didn't know that I know I can get me out of now. And that was applying myself, researching, trying to be better. And it was so hard. I'm not kidding you how hard it was. And I was in class eight hours a day in 15 minute increments. And some of you guys were calling me and I'd be like, I can talk to you at 145. And you're like, well, that's such an odd time. That's because that's when my break was. And those 15 minute increments, I would follow up. I would do my happy mail. I would work on my team mail. I would do everything I could to be intentional to move forward in my Cincy business because my Cincy business is what's going to get me there. You know, I, I help give myself the education and the knowledge to know more, but my Cincy business is what's going to keep me there to be able to move forward to the things that I want in my life for my family. So now I know how to train someone who works eight hours a day. I had never had to do it in years, but I had no time, none. But my PRV, which I told you guys last time on the last call was more than it's ever been. And that was not with any events. And that was not with, anything where I had to buy inventory. As a matter of fact, I've got the least bit of stuff right now than, I, than I've ever had. And I feel like it's because I was very intentional with my follow-up. I was very intentional with my happy meal. I was very intentional with asking people to join and fill in the gap of why it would work for them. And working on those little 15 minute segments that I was allocated because the homework holy cow, I had 29 tests I had to take within four weeks, four exams, two pre-quizzes in the state and national. And oh my gosh, my head was about to explode. When I finally passed it, and when I was done and I came home, I was like, please tell me you passed it because I don't want to hear about it anymore. Because that's all I talked about was how hard it was. And when you guys sit there and say, since it's just so hard, it's just so hard. You're making it hard because guess what? It wasn't hard when I showed up every night and did my homework. It wasn't hard when I broke it down in the flashcards. It wasn't hard when I found an accountability group on Facebook of people who were trying to pass the real estate exam. It wasn't hard when I had accountability. I had to commit I had to be courage and move forward. I had to find the capability as of being able to do it and take the test. And I feel really confident about what I've learned. But I had to use the four C's again. So the whole thing is the fact that every time you have a goal, you can't stop. You start back again. Say, well, what's my next goal? Well, my next goal is going to take me committing to it. My next goal is going to take me being courageous and showing up. My next goal after that is going to make me capable and it's going to give me confidence to where I crush that goal and we're going to start a new goal. And I got to commit to that because it's never, ever going to be done. You can never be the smartest person in the room. You've always got to be coachable. You've always got to be willing to learn. You've always got to be willing to hear constructive criticism, right? I failed like nine of those tests at 53%. And I beat myself up because I couldn't figure this stuff out. And my mom's like, you're very analytical. You're overthinking this because my mom has hers. And she's like, you're overthinking it. You're overthinking it. And then I went back and I learned how to study it. And then it helped me. But it's the same thing in our business. If you really sit here right now. And if I could say right now, I could say, let's have a booking list, call 20 people. I guarantee you those 20 people, at least one person would say, yes, I want to spell many cents. Yeah, I have thought about the opportunity. But when do you sit down and really message 20 people? That's the commitment. Whenever it's that big for you that you want it to be able to pay those bills. You want to be able to stay home with those kids. You want to feel better. You want to feel like you belong. You want to walk across that stage because some people, that's what it is for them. It's being acknowledged. It's knowing that they hit something. It's having those high fives. 
I don't know what it is for you, but I know it's my happy place. I know it makes a difference. I know me showing up every day is going to cheer up somebody somehow. You know, I'm doing a huge fundraiser right now for a dog rescue place out of in another state because I did a fundraiser for somebody else and they just happened to talk to them. But if I wouldn't have shown up and did that first fundraiser that I was scared to death to even talk to them about, I felt like I don't even know how to do it. So I'm not going to talk to them about it. I don't even know how to put a packet together. So I'm not going to talk to them about it. I don't even know who to talk to or how to even do the profit. I'm not going to talk to them about it. But I was like, but what if it makes a difference? And guess what? I drafted up something. It did not look perfect. I crafted it up, gave it to them, and I tweaked it along the way to where finally I felt really good with it. With this dog thing, I have no idea what to do. He's asking me to do things I'm like, okay, well, we got dog products. I can make samples of it. I can put a QR code on it. I can make them a link. I can keep the link going all summer. I have no idea how to do some things, but I do it. And I figure it out whenever I move and I commit to it. And that is what you have to do, right? Thing is, guys, listen to me. Anybody can quit. Every person in this world can quit. That's the one thing we all have in common. We can all quit. But it's only a very small percent of people that continue. If you want what 99% of the world could give you, you have to do what 99% of the world will not do. You've got to be that 1%. That says, you know what? I'm taking a hold of my life. I'm taking a hold of my business. I'm going to commit and I'm going to show up. And then I'm going to teach my team how to do it. I'm going to be capable at it and I'm going to be confident at it. And they are too, because I'm showing up. And, and there's too many people that message me and say, you know, I can't do it. When you can, you can do it. You know, you got to stay in that commitment stage long enough to create that courage stage. You're going to hear those no's. You're going to have awful customers. You're going to have teammates that say nasty things to you. You're going to have teammates who quit and you're going to feel like it's your fault. You're going to have people who don't want to talk to you. You're going to also have people who tell you that if you wouldn't have said something to them, it, it wouldn't have changed their life. That They wouldn't have been able to stay home with their kids. They wouldn't have been able to, you know, be able to have sense to be able to pay those bills. They wouldn't have been able to experience things they never thought they'd be able to experience if you would not have talked to them about it. Because that commitment has to be strong. That commitment makes it to where you want to pick up the phone and call the next person. Makes it to where you want to keep telling people about that opportunity. Because I'm telling you, the best product that we have is the opportunity. It's not just the product. The products are awesome. It's the opportunity. Because that is something that works in everybody's life a different way. You know, it's like reading a book and then one person reads it and they get this side of it. And then I read it and I get this side of it. Like the Bible, you know, a lot of people reread it because it speaks to them in different seasons of their life. Since he blesses people in so many ways, just because it blessed you a certain way doesn't mean it's going to bless them that way. And that's one thing that people can see. You know, there's times that people are like, I want to do that because so-and-so had that. But what if that's not your path? What if you join because the person that just that you just sponsored needed to that $45 to pay the utility bill? Maybe it wasn't for you to go to Netherlands, but it was for you to make a difference in that person's life, right? And you stay in that capability stage long enough to create the next level of confidence. Each stage is crucially important but you don't leave that stage until you accomplish it. That is why people stay in the commitment stage so long and they also leave that commitment stage so quickly. The moment you start getting the capable, that confidence will come and there will be nothing that you don't feel like you can't do. It's not that you'll be in a state of courage until you get the confidence. Some people get confused. It's that you get the state of courage until you start seeing the capability that gives you that confidence. It's consistency and showing up every single day. The miracle will happen in this business that you've been praying for after you tell me you're fully committed. And I wanna see that. Are you guys all in? Are you really committed to this? Are you ready to 
move mountains in this business? Are you ready to promote? Are you ready to walk across that stage? Are you ready to make a difference in other people's lives? Do you believe in Cincy? Are you all in? I want to see it. Put it on there. Tell me you're all in. If you're watching online, tell me you're all in. Because I'm telling you guys, I've seen it a thousand times. Rivers has changed so many lives. For a lot of people, the reason their lives don't move forward is because they're never thinking and talking about the future in such a way that there's actually a commitment to a different kind of result than they are used to every single day that they're experiencing right now. They never talk about what is possible. Instead, they talk about the mundane things that happen in their life every single day. And that's speaking it over your life. And it's hard sometimes. It's been hard for me because I've got kids and I don't like to think five years from now. Because five years from now, they could be out of the house. And it just like, it paralyzes me. I don't like to think about it. Or my husband's like, oh yeah, full speed ahead. We'll be able to do this and this and this and have freedom. And I'm like, no, no, I don't think I'm going to do well as a nester, right? But you've got to speak of the great things that are going to come in the future. Your future self is just waiting on it. And the thing is, these things of commitment and courage and capability and confidence, they change your past, the way that you look at your past as well. Because so many of us dwell on how bad our past was that we'll never be able to do anything because of this, this, and this. But when you move forward and you learn those lessons that the past was teaching you, then you're going to look back at that past and go, you know what? I know why I went through that now because this is where I am today. And where I am today, I'm going to go through some stuff that's going to make me who I am tomorrow. It changes your view of the future. It changes your view of the past, but you have to be able to commit. That's the most important thing. And the reason that people won't make these big commitments, it's because they haven't been guaranteed the capability and the confidence to do it. A lot of people haven't really achieved much. You know, some people don't feel like they have. Yeah, they have. I had to do an exercise the other day. I had to write down 50 things that I've achieved in my life. And I was sitting there and I was trying to think of all these really big things. And she was just like, oh my gosh. She, the girl that was teaching this was like, okay, well, you learned how to talk. You learned how to walk. You got up today. You know, you learned how to write. And I'm like, yeah, but she goes, you take those things for granted. But you know how many people, there are people out there that can't do those things. That's an achievement, right? You know, you graduated or, you know, you got this degree or maybe, you know, you got this level of a promotion or maybe you have this talent or maybe you can sing or maybe you can play the piano. All those things are achievements. All of us have skills and talents that are different from each other, but there's achievements. And the thing is, I was looking at the big picture of like, well, what kind of achievements have I had? What kind of accolades have I gotten? Whenever we all have those achievements, but we tell ourselves that we're not enough. We tell ourselves we don't matter. We tell ourselves that we can't make a difference because we don't have the things and the plaques on the wall. Whenever we have everything we need in order to move forward, right? It's not the way it works at all. Commitment and courage have to come first. And then you will see your whole business fold out in front of you completely. So we're going to move to the um, the last thing because I'm keeping up with the time here. And we're doing really, really good on time because I'm going to have you guys out of here. But this sheet, I asked you guys to print off. And I want you guys to do this alongside me here. So you guys can see it. So it's your purpose filter. Because a lot of people don't like to say why. A lot of people don't like the goal sheet. So we have a, a purpose filter. I actually kind of crafted it from something else that I had. And I just put our name on it because that's who we are, right? But I want you to think about right now. I want you to fill this out. And if some of you guys feel free, you can write it in the chat below. You can write it, you know, in this chat here. But what do you want to accomplish in this business? What is your motivation for doing it, right? So why don't you write that down? What do you want to accomplish? And what is your motivation? You know, I had one girl that said, I want to be a director. I'm like, okay, what's your motivation to do it? 
Should I want to finally be able to walk across the stage? I want to finally be able to achieve something that I set my eyes on. That right there is pretty big because she finally wants to do something she said she would do. She said she's had her whole life where she started something and didn't finish it. That's her motivation. So she wants to see the end of it. But the thing is, it's not the end. It's only the beginning of something else better, right? So if anybody wants to share, then write that down there. You know, what is it that you want to accomplish and what is your motivation? That is your purpose. That's how you find your purpose for everything you do. If you want something, you got to ask yourself, what is the motivation behind me wanting that? And then you'll be able to tell if that's something you really need or is it something that you want or is it something that, you know what, that's not a big a goal for me. The importance is really important. What is the difference that this will make? What is the difference that this will make? So Brittany says, I want to accomplish having a team of 20 by the end of the year. I have a team of six right now. And what is your motivation for doing that? You've got to write down what is your motivation? What is the difference that this will make and what impact will this have? Well, I'll tell you right now, the difference I'll make is think about 20 people's lives that you're going to impact, that you're going to be able to speak life into, that you're going to be able to guide to success, that you're going to be able to be there for and listen to and care for and make them belong to something. What is the impact that it will have for that? It would be huge. Those people would feel like they're cared for. You know, they're just not entering a business where they're a number. You're entering a business where I see your name, the sponsor sees your name, director sees your name. We know your life. We know your you know, story. And it matters. You're not just number 106 out of a thousand people, right? At a business. It's important for people to be able to feel like they belong. There's so many jobs out there that people do not ever hear thank you for, ever. Or thank you for showing up. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for doing it. They just expect to do it. Where I believe in the Cincy family that we have, that we can celebrate the small things and the big things. Be financially stable through my achievement of being a director by August and a superstar director by the end of the next year. My vision is prove that my health does not define me and what I can do. That's beautiful. I love that. Love that. Love that. And you know the difference that it will make, right? Your testimony is going to be huge. I'm going to a director role and be the best mentor I can to my team, personal and professional growth, to have my own place. 58, never live in my own place, been married or had my children or friends living in That's great. That's such a beautiful goal. My help's not me down last year too. So kudos for constantly pushing. Amen. That's right. That is right. Your ideal outcome. What does that completed project look like? And what is the payoff? That's a big one. You got to really think, what does that look like to you? Not just having that director title, not just having the superstar director title or a star director title. What does it look like? What does that paycheck look like to you? What are you going to do with that paycheck? How is it going to help you be able to pay for the things that you need in life? How are you going to impact others' lives through hitting your goal? What is the payoff? Is it happiness? Is it a feeling? Is it actually, you know, being able to see the fruit of what it is that you're planting your seeds for? That ideal outcome is very important. The success criteria, what specific results must be true for this project to be a success? This is where people miss it. This is where people skip to the end and see they didn't hit the result. So therefore they're going to quit. Therefore it doesn't matter. It's like sour grapes, right? But what are the specific results that must be true for this project to be success? Think about that for a second. What has to happen? for you to hit director? What has to happen for you to take a hold of your health? What has to happen for you to own your own place? What has to happen for you to be able to stay home with your kids? What has to happen for you to be able to pay off your debt? What has to happen for you to impact many lives? Someone told me one time that the zeros in your paycheck reflect how many lives that you've actually changed. And that was a big one for me. Because I had a huge number in my head of lives that I wanted to change. And being able to look and see that your paycheck 
reflects how many people you've talked to, that's a pretty cool thing, you know? Title doesn't change you, you change you. Amen. Commitment, you got it. So definitely here, one of the things is going to be commitment. You got to be all in. You got to excuse bust yourself. You've got to be accountable. You got to make those goals. You need to have one-on-ones with your director or your sponsor or me or star director. You need to raise your hand and say, I am ready to move forward and I want to make a plan. Because we can't read minds here at all, right? If you're sitting there saying, I want to be a director, but you never contact me and say, hey, help me make a plan. You know, a lot of people can make their own plan. But some people need that accountability. I need accountability in my life. I mean, I needed it with the real estate stuff. I needed it with, you know, working out. Accountability is huge. We have whams because of accountability. I need to push myself through getting out of my comfort zone to give people this opportunity as well. The commitment I have will show in the amount of lives I touch. That's right. So I want you to go through and I want you to write down the specific results that have to be true for this to happen. Because I told you, we all have those capabilities to make this happen, but we also have capabilities to be able to quit. And we don't want to walk in that direction. Yeah, we're going to be doing an elite again. So the last thing we're going to talk about is selling yourself, right? Your best result. If you hit all these goals, if you put all this stuff in place, right? What's possible if you do take action? What does the world open up for you and say, hey, Let's walk into this. Your future self is just sitting there saying, come on, let's do it. Come on, right? The worst result. What's at risk if you don't take that action? For me, I thought about that. What if I fail the test? I had to really think about that. What if I fail the test? Well, guess what? The first time I did, I had to take it twice. But I could have quit the first time because it was hard. I didn't take it seriously. I thought, this can't be that hard. But I had to study my tail off and do it again and wipe myself up and humble myself and be like, okay, you know what? This is serious. And that's what your business does sometimes. You know, some people get to the very end of the year and they're about to terminate and they're like, you know what? I don't want to terminate. I've really screwed up this year because I didn't do any of the things, but there's nothing that can keep you from still hitting your goals. Nothing that can still help you become a superstar director. There are like three or four people already in the company that I know of that quit and came back and hit superstar director. And then somebody quit twice and came back a third time and they hit it. So they had teams and, and they just quit. They gave up. Life happened. And then they came back later. And it has nothing to do with the sponsor that they went under. It had nothing to do with whether they went under the same person they signed up under or not. Or the director it had to do with them being committed the second or third time around. So you got to think about that, you know, you got to think about if this doesn't happen, then what is the risk? What is the risk? If I don't hit director by August, am I going to quit? Am I going to quit? No, I'm not. I'm just going to keep going because what you're going to find is that your worst case scenario of things in your business, you can turn around and you can commit again and you can make it happen. So those are are the four things that I really wanted to talk to you about tonight. And I feel like if you guys, whoops, if you guys will just go in and do these things of commitment, your business will change. How do you handle your sponsor not reaching out or checking out on you? I've tried to connect a few times and get left and read. I've been going to my director. Is there something I can do different? Why are you letting that stop you from your success? I'm going to tell you something. It's going to sound ugly. Your sponsor is not responsible for your success. Your director is not responsible for your success. You are. If they are not reaching out back to you, you go to your director. If your director isn't, then you go above them. You, there's a chain of command, but you don't need anyone to be able to help you be successful in this business. There's YouTube. There's a workstation. There is one-on-ones. We're all here. And we can help you. There's whams. There's all these things that you can do. You can't use the excuse that your sponsor wasn't there. I have a girl under me that I was there for her all the time. For five years, I was there for her every day. She loves to tell people I wasn't there for her. So I know I was, but she loves to tell people 
I wasn't. And then she likes to say that she did it herself, right? If that's what she needs to do, that's what she needs to do. I know what I did. But I also know people whose lives have been hectic and crazy, and they haven't been able to train people the way that, you know, I would want them to. But the people underneath them that really wanted it and that were really committed, they kept going and surpassed the people who didn't care. So you can't let that one thing hold you back, okay? You only fail if you don't try. That's right. The only way to fail in this business is just quitting. But that's that's a perfect, perfect thing to say. Personally, I have a team messenger chat, plus a group if they need me, individual chat. My team gave me the feedback that they love having a chat. Failure is not an option. And I'm going to tell you something that's really, really important. And we'll end this unless you guys have questions. You have to do for your team and your group what is duplicatable for someone else underneath you. So if I, if I had a group of 20 and I made um, keychains for them and they were all $5 a piece, I'm like, huh, I can handle $100, right? But then my group grows to 1,000. Can I do the, the same thing for 1,000 that I did for 20? No, I can't. So you have to think hard. I can't put thousands of people in a chat, right? So that chat might work for a little while with all these people, but your commitment is to grow. Your commitment is to have a huge team. That is where you will have a group page or you can actually reach out to people through email, but you're not gonna be able to be there for every single person. You're not gonna be able to be there and have one-on-ones with every single person. The people that deserve your time sometime are the people who don't ask for your time. And the people who ask for your time and demand your time sometime are the people that don't deserve your time. And that's something I have learned in this business because there's some people that have poured so much into and they'll go and join other businesses or they'll just give up so easily whenever there's someone over here who's been like, hey, I need help, I need help. And I never see the red flag because they never ever ask for it until I finally reach down to them. And that's what you'll do as a leader. You will message each person. You have team member sheets that you'll be able to find out things about each person, but never feel like you have to do it all. Never feel like you have to have every single person in one pod because every person has a different love language. Every person has, you know, some different way of learning. They might be visual. They might be, um, you know, with auditory. They might need that one-on-one -on -one time. They might be good to send a YouTube to. But that's something as a leader that we get to explore and it's fascinating and it's awesome to be able to invest in other people and find out how they tick and what helps them. If you do not have that above you and you're in this group, you do have that. Your directors are there for you. If they're not, your star directors will. And if they're not, you got me. So, and then there's people above me too. If you're not happy with me, and we will do a le leadership again. We're going to do it after convention. Now, are there any questions? Was this informative tonight? Did this help you at all? Because this book being just an hour long, hour and a half, I think it took. I did it all the way to Wilson, all the way back. And then about 20 minutes after, it really woke me up about the things I want in my life. You know, you know I ended up with a, um, a new horse. I really got to learn things on her. I went out there today and she was just not nice at all. Now, my commitment is to be able to learn to do things so that I can take her other places. But really quickly, she made me mad and I left. I didn't want to deal with it. And I remember Christy saying, Shane, you can ride her? You can ride her? And I was like, nope, not today. But then I got home. I'm like, why didn't I ride her? I'm committed. I'm committed to follow through and learn new things. Why didn't I do it? Because I was scared. And I told you, courage comes from when you're scared and you do it anyway, right? So as soon as I got off the phone with Sharon and told her a story about how that dumb horse made me mad, I rode right back out there and put her in that arena for about 10 minutes and at least felt good about myself because commitment for me in areas of my life that I want to be able to enjoy and I want to be able to be better at, I got to show up. 
I can't take that no and quit. I can't take, you know, the fact that someone doesn't like me, me to stop showing up, right? You can't either at all. So love you guys big. It's four minutes after. If you need any help, if you need any one-on-ones, you know, reach out to your directors and your sponsors and they'll get in touch with me or you can reach out to me if you're not hearing from them. But this is huge, guys. You've got to be committed to do this. If you're not having the success that you want in this business, go back and tell me what your commitment is and if it has truly been there. Because people want to buy. They want to join. They're going to bed at night and praying to get out of a situation, right? They're either wanting new friends or they're wanting to travel again or they're wanting to be able to have a little bit of income here. They're wanting to be able to contribute. You have that answer. And every day that you decide not to share is another day that you're not going to be going towards your goal because you're not committed to share. Okay. All right. Well, I love you guys. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And um, message me if you have any questions. Okay. Bye. Oh, there's attendee drawing too. So I have here in the chat and um, the winner tonight will get a set of cotton cleanups because I know how hard they have come by. And last time that we had the attendee drawing, Christy Pinnell ended up um, winning like some thank you things for her customers. Um, some already warmer the month things that I had made and some cotton cleanup. So yeah, these attendee drawings are really fun. Okay. And uh, another way that I'll be able to know is we're going to have a keyword and the keyword today. Let me think, what's a keyword? Gumball. The keyword is gumball. So as soon as you get off, you need to write it on the page. The, the key, you know, the keyword. And then when I call the person who wins, you got to tell me the keyword. Okay. All right. Bye.